Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wine and Dine with Mastro, where food and magic meet. I'm your host, Tom Mastriani, and today we're going to be making one of my favorite dishes, crab legs. Very simple, but so good. I could eat about 50 pounds of crab legs. Maybe not 50, but at least five pounds of crab legs in one sitting. They're my favorite, whether they're snow crabs or king crab leg. And what we have today are king crab legs, and these are gigantic. These are really big. The whole crab is probably about this big, maybe bigger, because the leg is, say, about three feet long, both sides, six feet, plus the body. Yeah, you're talking really big crab. So, and these are right out of, out of Alaska, and uh, they're gonna pair with a really light, it's a light flavor, so we're gonna pair it with some really light, clean wines. So, get ready. All right, so now let's go over to the rack for our first contestant. We have an Alois Legator, which is the Venter Pour. And this actually is an Italian wine, and it's so high north in Italy that originally uh, it was part of Germany. So the people there speak German most of the time. Uh, this particular wine, very good, very clean and crisp. It's uh, grown on the hills and on the mountains. It's along the, the Alps. Pour by Alois Legator. Let's open it up. And it's very interesting because most of the, the area, the town, since they do speak French and German, they created their own language, kind of like in New York where you came out with. They have their own language that they speak. Swirl. Mmm, melon, peach. Mmm, a little bit of pear. It smells really nice. Really nice. Look at the straw yellow color. A little hint of orange. Very nice. Very nice. Mmm, right off the bat, I'm getting peach, green apple, a little citrusy and some grass. I'm getting some fresh cut grass in there. And little tight tannins, a little astringent. Feeling my tongue pull in on the sides a little. A little lemony finish on there. So, very complex. It's nice. Mmm, check that out. Now we're gonna get into the uh, crab legs. We're gonna take these crab legs, we're gonna steam them, then we're gonna split them, and then we're gonna garnish them with their own crab. So we're gonna take those knuckles and we're gonna steam them all, pull out the crab meat, and then use that for a garnish on top. All right, get our water boiling. Got one of these baskets to put it in. Once that water gets boiling, we'll put the crab legs in there, but we're gonna slice these up a little bit because they're a little big for the pot. Right there, knuckle. Oh, you always want to use frozen crab legs. Don't let them thaw. You want to keep them frozen. You're gonna, you know, save the flavor. So now we have our two crab legs and these parts. So let's put them in the basket. And the other thing is, these guys are really dangerous. These things are as sharp as can be. So be very careful when you're working with these. It's always a battle and it's it's so much fun because you're doing battle with the crab when you're trying to eat it and if you don't come out with at least a scratch or two or at least you know it could be even worse um, you're lucky. So you had a great meal and you came out unscathed. We're gonna let those steam for about six minutes 
and we're going to let that run. And as soon as that's done, we'll, um, we'll pull them out and slice them up. Now we're going to prepare our polenta. So we have this polenta here, and it's pre-made. And we're going to slice it up into about one inch thick pieces. Polenta is actually cornmeal, corn, and it's mixed with milk. Pair very nicely because it'll take on the flavor of whatever you cook it with. So in this case, it'll be the crab legs. So we're gonna just slice that up. We're gonna season it lightly and flour it, and then we're gonna fry it. So we'll see how that comes out. All right, now we got some nice pieces, all pretty much evenly sized. And we'll put those in there. All right. All right, so now we're going to take our flour and we're going to flavor it with uh, some seafood seasoning, some Italian seasonings, oregano, parsley, pink Himalayan salt. So we're going to mix this up. Nice batter for this. We've got our skillet, cast iron skillet. Heating up right now. So now we're going to take our polenta, bread these up. We've got one in here that's a little thin. I'm going to put that on there too. We'll make some something crispy that'll cook obviously quicker and faster than the, or quicker and get more crispy. Three is always the magic number in cooking. Never make four. Never make six. Stay away from the even numbers. This way, whoever's eating it, unless you're making it for yourself and you really want more, but definitely stick with the odd numbers. Again, one hand dry, one hand wet. Uh, we've got seven minutes on those crab legs. This is heated up. We're gonna put a little oil in here. In Sparta, we eat butter. Those crab legs are pretty much ready, so we gotta work fast. So we're gonna pull them out, pull them in here. We're gonna let them go just another minute more. Let's make sure they're definitely cooked. It's kind of tricky when you have crab legs that big. Just want them to get fully cooked. the thin one, put that right in the middle. I'm going to, this burner is a little too small, so we're going to move it to the back burner. This way the burner is a little bit bigger. These crab legs are now ready, so let's get them out of here. It smells great. Now we're going to take the knuckles of the crab. We're going to lay them out here. We're going to take them apart. We're going to let these cool a little bit. Put the wine cue off to the side. I know he's not happy being off to the side, but let's uh, get a different knife. And we're going to extract the crab meat from, from the shells. So we're going to split these. And again, it's, we're still going to be doing a little battle here. Crab meat in there for now. And you want to take off the um, there's uh, parts of this that's a little light. It's not it's not really crab meat. It's more like um, it's more like mush. So we don't want to put that in there. So let's pull this off. This looks great. We want to break it up a little bit because we're going to actually garnish the crab legs with the crab meat. And where I get my crab legs from, it varies. You can get them at different times of the year. September, October is the time to get crab legs. That's when the crab is the biggest in the shell. Before they molt and they shed their skin and get um, into the next growth phase. All right, so 
So let's flip these over. I do like things well done, crispy. I'll be doing a, uh, a deep fried sweet potato. That comes out really crispy. The skins just fall off and turn into these wafers of mm, deliciousness. All right, I'm gonna let that cook a little bit longer. Let's get back to the crab legs. Okay, now I'm gonna take our crab legs very carefully. You don't want to brush this. You just want to get it just right. Because you want to keep the shells intact. Right now, if you grab a towel or something like that, to keep the legs from stabbing you in the hand. But there's your crab meat. Ready to go. Now, very important, very important is to Get these like tendons out of there. These guys right here. That's not edible. No fun to eat. Nobody wants that in their crab legs. So let's just uh, just eliminate that. The other thing is with snow crab. Snow crab. It's a technique. I, I'd have to say I'm a master cracker, master of the master cracker when it comes to um, cracking crab legs. There's another one. I just want to get those out because it's, it's no fun getting those. But look at that, beautiful. I could just dip that in butter now and eat it. The other thing is what you can do with this leftover stuff, grind it up, throw it in your garden if you have a garden, and your plants will just go crazy. We have some strawberry plants living on that, and they're having an amazing time out there. It's, I, I came out last year, I was like, wow, look at those strawberries. And it was the second year of having them, and uh, it was just amazing. All right, so now we got these laid out. We're gonna clean up. We're gonna take care of the polenta. We're gonna saute this in, in butter. And back in a minute. See you soon. All right, the crab legs are ready. The meat's ready. We're gonna put that in a little bit. So let's get our next wine. We're going over to Di Leonardo. Ho, exclamation point, which is short for Tokai, which is a type of grape that's grown in the, right between the Alps and the Adriatic Sea. It's light, it's crisp, it's an Italian wine. This is a 2017. Let's give it a shot. It's, they call them microclimates, where each step down the mountain, it's a different temperature and a different, different humidity, different temperature going down. So they've chosen a certain level along the way. Mmm, smells melony and floral. Right off the bat, pour it in here. Oh, nice. Beautiful, bright yellow. Bright yellow color. Bright yellow hint of honey. And we're looking at about 12.5% alcohol there. Mmm, honey, creamy. That's really beautiful. Wow, look at that, look at that color. That's sweet. Again, the smell is there. That creaminess, it's light, it's smooth. I'm getting a very back of my throat with maybe a hint of lemon and a little bit of grapefruit. And up front, I'm getting a little oakiness. Might be a little strong for the, uh, for the crab legs, but it's an adventure. We're on an adventure here. We're gonna try different wines and we're gonna see what pairs best. So let's start making the, uh, the crab topping for this crab. Also, our polenta is ready to go. So let's just um, pull that out. And then this guy, as I thought, it's a little overdone. I'm gonna try it anyway. Because some people like well done. I remember running into a pizza parlor one day and the uh, guy had this pie. The pie was 
really, really well done, but it wasn't burnt. It was just beyond what people would usually buy. I was about to throw it out. I'm like, what are you doing with that? And my mom loved uh, pizza also really well done. So she walk over and the guy was about to throw it out. I said, whoa, what are you doing with that? He's like, throwing it out. Nobody will want this. I said, bring it over. I'll take it. So I took it home. I opened the box. My mom was like, ooh, it was like amazing. So some people like it well done as I do. So we're going to put it here. Keep it nice and clean and fresh. I don't want it getting any kind of burntness or any kind of overpowering flavor. You know, crab meat is something that you just want super clean. So we're just going to put some butter on there. All right, so instead of paprika, I'm going to pull out secret ingredient here, Phillips seafood seasoning. This is, we're just going to give a light touch of this. Whoops. And uh, beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to take these pieces. We're going to lay it out on top. So the butter is going to kind of drizzle in with the crab that's already in the shell. And when people see, oh, I only have half a crab leg, they might get upset. So in this case, they're in theory getting a whole crab leg. We're going to need our polenta, so let's go grab our polenta and plate that. And let's take our crab legs. This guy, I put him up here. Whoops. Remember, it's all about presentation. So I want it to look really nice. Should have called this the crazy crab leg episode. Drizzle some of that butter on there. Get the polenta. All right, so now we're going to finish it. Just a little bit of lemon zest. Gonna take our zester and lemon. That's going to complement the wine also very, very well. Here we go. Now we've got our crab. We're up for a third wine. We're going for deep into the rack. We're getting a Tesoro della Regina. This is a Pinot Grigio and it's from a Val d'Adigi, okay? 2017, it's a beautiful wine. This is gonna be light and crisp. It should complement the rest of these, and it will certainly go well with the fish. Now remember, fish, you always wanna go with a white, especially this, this is so light. You're not going to um, wanna overpower it with anything. It's like you certainly want, don't wanna drink a big red with this, but we could try, you know? And and again, wine is an adventure. You know what, maybe we should have done that. Go with a big red, just see what just happens. I'll do that for you. And we'll break out a red just to see. Now, Pinot Grigio is one of the most popular wines in Italy. They make more Pinot Grigio than they make of anything else. Mmm. Honey, straw yellow color, honey, a little bit of almond. That's interesting. Mmm, that's probably gonna complement very well. Mmm, mmm, really nice. A little sweet, just a hint of grapefruit and a hint of not really lemon, I'd say melon, like a green, a fresh green melon. Yeah, that's good. Mm. I think that's gonna go well. All right, let's let's try it. Break out a fork. So now let's give it a taste. So let's try this one. Try a little of this on top. Crab leg, 
I don't know what it is about crab leg. It's it's saltiness, uh, mild saltiness, and it has just a, a flavor. It's almost indescribable, but I'm gonna try and bring it towards you. It's um, it's light, mildly fishy. When you're talking light fish, I mean sushi has a really light flavor. This has a light flavor, but it's also it, the, the salt content is is good. The butter accents it. It, it almost makes it flow. It's almost like it, it's crab legs swimming in butter, but not overpowering with butter. So let's finish this off with a wine. Uh, let's go with this one first, and this is the the pour. That paired pretty nicely. It didn't really complement it that much. It kind of contrasted it. I'm getting that the uh, lemon at the end, and, and it's it's taken away from the crab legs. So we're gonna say that it's not the right one. Let's try another piece of this. That's very nice, very light, creamy. Still, the finish is still, you got that lemony finish. That's not really, it's not really doing it for me. This is the frilly. Let's try this. A little buttery. Oop. The contrast is, uh, is very nice. All right, so let's try this. little much on the on the forward side but on the back side it blends very nicely let me take another bite of this with that really nice doesn't take away from it that's really nice let's let's try it with the uh, the polenta it's nice with the corn the polenta let's get the flavor of this Very nice. Oh, the corn and the crab blend very, very nice together. The slight caramelization of the corn, which is the, the more cooked part, really blends nicely. I think this wine is definitely our winner here. All right, I believe that's the to, Tokai. That's really, really nice. That goes very well with this. Say hands down, this is the best pick. Um, the pour, still very good, light and crisp. And the, uh, the Tesora della Regina, still very nice, light and crisp. The lemony finish, Pinot Grigio. Mmm, can't beat it. Definitely. So, Filano, beautiful. Perfect pairing with this crab legs, the polenta, a little bit on the well-cooked side. I'm Tom Mastriani. Thanks for joining me on Wine and Dine with Mastro. Remember to visit me on my website at www.mastrotv.com. You can also find me on Instagram where I got great recipes, great posts. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Cheers.